mm -hmm. that they can cause a fissure. I understand. So <laughs> when a water cooled reactor starts to heat up, mm -hmm. the water becomes less dense. Uh huh. And when it's less dense, it mm -hmm. moderates less neutrons. Okay. When it gets really hot and that water becomes steam, uh -huh. it's it's becomes a uh, uh, a lot less dense, uh -huh. and there's a lot less water molecules to moderate the neutrons. So as a as the power level goes up yeah. and more steam is created, mm -hmm. less neutrons are generated, which which causes the power to go back down. Okay, I understand. In the type that Chernobyl had, yeah. because it was. <clears throat> Graphite moderated, but yeah. water cooled. Um, when when the power went up, yeah, the 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 water becoming warm didn't have any impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it does in in uh, either a boiling water or a pressurized water reactor. Yeah, I understand. In the type that Chernobyl had, yeah. because it was <clears throat> graphite moderated, but yeah. water cooled. Um. When when the power went up, yeah, the 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 water becoming warm didn't have any impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it does in in uh, either a boiling water or a pressurized water reactor. Yeah. The other um, big important thing was in Chernobyl they had overridden safety systems to do this test that they were doing. Yeah. So they had overridden a lot of their automatic shutdowns. Okay. The the most important mm -hmm. thing was that there was no containment building. Okay. So as bad as things have been, mm -hmm. the containments, the primary containment buildings, which um, in the news there have been reports that maybe one or one of them was damaged, maybe not. Uh, today, um, I indicated in my update that the the latest information indicates that all three of those primary containment are still intact. Okay. And, and that's, of course, keeping the vast majority of the radiation, mm -hmm. really the radioactivity, yeah. Um, yeah. in that primary containment. And the only thing that's getting out is what the operators are intentionally venting. Yeah. Which, and the reason they're venting is, as I've explained, yeah. the seawater pumps are low pressure. Yeah. Uh, they're fire pumps. Yes. They're, they're, they only put out a, a, like 100 pounds, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, or maybe a little bit higher, but certainly not thousands of pounds. Yes. So they have to vent the steam to lower the pressure yeah. so that the water can flow in. Okay. So Once they're able to get a high-pressure pump going, they yeah. won't need to do that anymore. Okay. Why so that's why it's really important. That's why it's really important if we can restore electricity, mm -hmm. and get a higher pressure pump, we'll be able to fill those re reactor vessels up and we won't have to vent any more steam, which of course has radioactivity in it, okay. to the atmosphere. But what, what was the reason uh, why the Chernobyl re re uh, reactor exploded? It exploded because because uh, they had overwritten the safety features. Yeah. So they didn't get their automatic shutdowns. Mm -hmm. And... Because it was inherently unstable, yeah. there was there, you didn't have this water reaction to slow it down, yeah. and it became super critical and exploded. So, uh, and, and and the graphite mm -hmm. caught on fire. Ah, uh, okay. Wow. So we had the explosion, we had the fire, all of this carrying a huge quantity of uh, radioactivity up into the atmosphere, mm -hmm. and then there was no containment structure to to keep it inside. I mean, it literally went up, all of it up into the atmosphere. I understand. But the, then the nuclear fuel is, and then the, the fuel is explosive? Like the, the nuclear fuel is explosive then? If it's, uh, if it becomes super critical? The, the, the nuclear fuel that you have at these plants, um, in and of itself is, is not explosive. Yeah. But as we've learned over the past few days, once the, the cladding of zirconium heats up yeah. and gets to um, a little over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, mm -hmm. it forms hydrogen. Yeah. And the hydrogen is explosive. That's yeah. why we've had four 
four major explosions, in yeah. a, one in each of the units. Yeah, my concern is uh, the the containment of the the, the vessel, right? Uh, what are the chances of that vessel to to explode? Or well, know? I think I think our biggest concern right now is the spent fuel mm -hmm. because there is no containment around that. Uh -huh. You've seen that the um, the buildings are very damaged. Yeah, and that's open to the atmosphere, so it's absolutely essential that we try to keep putting water on those spent fuel pools. And that's why they've been making such such a huge effort with mm. the military and, and the firefighters yeah. to to pour as much water as they can mm. on on units three and four. Okay. But there is no chance for for the uh for the um, containment the primary containment to, to explode. Well, there's there's always a possibility as long as we we don't have the core completely covered mm -hmm. that we're continuing to generate hydrogen. Yeah. Uh, okay. And there would be hydrogen released when they vent the steam to the atmosphere. Okay. Um, hopefully, they're they're um, able to keep the radiation levels down. So they can keep the control rooms manned, mm -hmm. so that they can continue to vent and keep the pressure down, so that we don't get to a point where the pressure would increase beyond the design capability of the primary containment building. Oh, okay, I understand. So the amount. Of mm. Go ahead. Yeah, the if you, if we compare like the Chernobyl case and the and the Fukushima one, the amount of fuel and everything, all, all these kind of uh, things. I mean, how different was the amount of fuel and 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 the type of uh, fuel they were using? And and this is was it significantly bigger in Chernobyl? Or is it, what can you say about? That? Well, what what I can say is to to, to in the past twenty four hours, the mm -hmm. the government has raised the emergency number to five out of seven. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, and in the opinion of, of some other experts, the, the French, the Russians, uh, we all think the number should be higher. Yeah. We think, my opinion is, it, it should probably be a, a six. Mm -hmm. It's certainly not uh, uh, Chernobyl. Yeah. Because we, you know, it's, it's a, it is a better design Um, we do have the containment buildings, but the, the main reason that I feel that it should be higher is because right now, you know, the comparison is to Three Mile Island in oh, the yeah. U.S. Uh -huh. Three Mile Island in the U.S. was only one reactor. Mm -hmm. There was no considerable radiation or radioactivity released to the environment. Yeah. It was mostly, you know, 99.9% contained. Um, on site, yeah. We never lost power, mm. so they had electricity, they had cooling, they had all those things to to recover yeah. from from the event, and and they pretty much had recovered the plant after four days. Okay. Uh, in terms of uh, covering the core and, and being able to cool things, obviously the plant itself never operated again, but. Mm. For, for the most part, it was over after four days. Right. So here we have a situation where after a week, it's still not under control. Mm -hmm. We have <coughs> four, four reactors involved. And when you factor in the amount of spent fuel that we have and the concerns that we have for the spent fuel pools, yeah. I, I think it's still a very <coughs> dangerous situation. I see. Let's say let's say that for 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 safety reasons they have to evacuate all the uh, all the people working on those plants. Can the uh, can the fuel cool down by itself? No. So it definitely requires. No, if, that, if that was the case, then we would reach the point where we would have to start dropping sand and concrete from helicopters. Mm. Okay. But wouldn't wouldn't that be easier, like to drop concrete just right now and evacuate everyone, just to shut that thing down and you know cover it up? I, I don't think so because 
if we can restore power and restore cooling, yeah, it will allow us. Um, clearly, those four plants are never going to operate again. Uh-huh. But but it would allow um, the company. It would allow Japan to fully decommission the sites. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And so the long term consequences would be a lot less. Okay. If if we have to go to the extent where we start entombing these plants mm-hmm. in sand and concrete, then then we'll never be able to. <coughs> Um, fully decontaminate the site or deconstruct these plants. Ah, I see. So at this rate, the cool down would take about how long? It's hard to say because <clears throat> I don't. I don't know. <coughs> I don't know um, how long each of those plants was operating for, <clears throat> and <clears throat> how much decay heat there would be. But it always takes. Uh, uh, months for a fuel rod once it's taken out of the reactor to cool down enough that that you could um, move it out of the spent fuel pool. So if, wow. we're going to have to provide once we get a water back. Yeah, we're going to have to be, provide cooling for for a long period of time. It will not be days or just weeks. It's it's months. So it would be months of stress. <laughs> well, no, I think. I think once they are able to to restore water and cooling, then the worst is probably over. So my sincere hope is that in the next three or four days, as they're able to restore restore power, yeah, that given that there's multiple redundant systems in these plants, yeah. they can get at least one cooling system in each plant working. I understand. Yeah, the, and as far as as far as the, the spent fuel pools go, yeah. Once once they can fill those back up with water, mm-hmm. then the radiation levels will drop dramatically. Oh, I see. Because well, water is a very very good shield of radiation. I understand. I've heard that the Fukushima reactor is about forty year old. I mean, do you think they 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 did some redesign after the Chernobyl accident? I think or. Probably the Chernobyl reactor was the the plant was about the same age. In the seventies, right? So you're correct in that in that the um, oldest um, reactor there, reactor one, is is forty years old. Yeah. But but that's a little bit misleading because uh, in a nuclear power plant, they're they're very well maintained. Yes, and and major portions of the plant are replaced periodically. Mm. So many many parts of that plant are probably only a few years old, and there there have been um, a lot of upgrades done to these plants over the years. To uh, from lessons learned from other plants and other incidents to improve the safety features. Yeah. And the training and the maintenance have all been improved over the over the last many years. There, there was many many improvements made following Three Mile Island and the lessons learned from that that were made at you know all these power plants around the world. So the 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 big thing, of course, is if. Um, If if Japan was to build one of the new Westinghouse AP 1000s, yeah, or I think GE calls their new generation the ESBWR, yeah, they have a lot of passive safety features that don't require any pumps or electricity. Oh, okay, they they were about to decommission yeah. this plant last year. I heard. What's that? They, they they were they were going to decommission the plant uh, uh, about a year ago and then they what the government decided to give it a, 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 a give it a more more years of service due to the um... yes I, I read I read that they had 